Have you ever wondered what the most common osteoporotic fractures are and if there's anything that you can do about them? Well, today we're going to talk about what the most common osteoporotic fractures are and what you can do to help prevent the most common osteoporotic fracture. I'm Sarah. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am glad that you are here to join me on a journey to better bone health. Let's get into it. Let's get started by talking about where the most common osteoporotic fractures are. So the number one most common osteoporotic fracture are compression or wedge fractures that happen in the spine. These are also often called postural fractures. The number two fracture are fractures that happen at the hip and femur. The femur is the big bone in your thigh and your femur bone connects into your hip and that's a big fracture point. The third most common fracture fracturing areas are fracturing areas because there are two that are the third most common. How's that for confusing? They are our wrists and our ribs. So today we're going to talk about compression or wedge fractures in the spine and what you can do to help to protect your spine. So first of all, let's talk about posture. I'm going to turn towards the side so that you can see me. I'm sitting up nice and tall while I talk to you in general, and I am really mindful about sitting up nice and tall generally when I sit because I know how important this is, but that has not always been the case. I have had really terrible posture and had to work really hard to improve my posture. So if you've done that like me, it's okay. We can all improve from right where we are right now and we can work on doing it together. So compression or wedge fractures, where they're called postural fractures, are caused from coming into this rounded shape. So we all come into this rounded shape, whether we're looking at our phone or reading a book, Maybe we are just working at our computers and we're busy typing and staring at the screen. Maybe we're leaned back and just in this curled up posture as, while we lean on our sofas to watch a movie or TV. It's a common posture and it's something that we all do. The problem isn't necessarily coming into a rounded spine, but the problem is coming into a rounded spine when you have osteoporosis. Because you have less bone mass that you're working with, then the bone is more inclined to compress and to wedge in against itself. The bone can even come in and crumble a little bit. So when we come into this shape and we have osteoporosis, it can just be a little bit overwhelming and our spines are inclined to create small wedges or fractures where the bone compresses in on itself or where it crumbles and just kind of meshes and crunches together. And you can have one and then you can have another one. You can have several. These can feel different to different people. Sometimes you might feel it and it could be excruciatingly painful. And other times you might have several compression or wedge fractures and still not have any pain and have no idea. But if you have sudden pain in your spine and you know that you have osteoporosis, it is definitely worth going in to have your doctor look at it. So, why are compression and wedge fractures a big deal? I think we think of the big deal fracture as the hip and the femur. And it's absolutely true. That is a major big deal when that happens. But compression or wedge fractures are also a big deal. And let's take a moment to talk about why that's the case. So when you have compression or wedge, frac wedge fractures, they are, once you have one, then you're inclined, you're more likely, you increase the likelihood, I should say, of getting another one. And we don't want another one. But what happens when you start to have a few of them and then your body starts to have something of a permanent kyphotic posture where it gets harder and harder to straighten up. When that happens, what happens to our bodies is that we're putting pressure on another area. We're putting pressure on our lungs. So it can become harder and harder to breathe. So a compression or wedge fracture, that's not likely to be the end of things and you've got time to heal and recover and to fix things for sure. But what can happen 
if they are ignored and left, and when you get a bunch of them, is that that kyphotic posture develops. And over time, it puts pressure on our lungs. So it's not the compression or wedge fracture that ends up getting us and doing us in where we end up dying, but it's that we develop a complication in our lungs over the next several years. Something that's related to breathing and it being harder to breathe, our lungs start to have trouble. And so it's the lung issue that gets us. So that's why compression or wedge fractures are really important to take seriously and to do everything that we can to create better support for the spine. So now that you understand why it's so important to take compression or wedge fracture seriously, let's talk about what you can do. This is one easy thing that you can do right now that will actually make a difference to protecting your spine. In the osteoporosis world, this is called sparing your spine. So sparing the spine means to keep your back straight as often as possible. So when sitting up, when sitting, think about sitting up nice and tall. None of us do this perfectly. But when you find yourself in your rounded position, whether it's typing at your computer or whatever you happen to be doing, and you catch yourself, then be mindful. And think about sitting up nice and tall and think, oh, I'm going to sit up. I'm going to be an elegant lady, like those Victorian ladies with their stiff, straight backs. Just take a moment and think to yourself, I'm going to be an elegant Victorian lady. And sit up nice and tall. So we can also spare the spine in our everyday life. We can do it when we pick things up off the ground, when we're digging through our fridge, when we're gardening or, or watering our plants. And you can also do this for anything else that isn't coming to my mind right now that requires you to round your spine. Just don't do it as often as possible. Spare your spine as often as you can. And then I'm going to put in a little plug here for what's coming. In January, I'm going to launch my program that will have lots to do to help protect all the areas where we can potentially incur osteoporotic fractures. So in January, I'm going to launch the Bone Builder System and it will teach you about all about osteoporosis and how to successfully manage and navigate osteoporosis. And then I'm also offering a monthly membership where we'll do exercise that's intended to provide really good support. So where we've been focused on talking about the spine today, what's applicable in this program, we will be doing lots of things that will strengthen the spine. So where posture is something that you should and can implement immediately, and I sincerely hope that you will do that. If you come and join me, working on um, bone health in either my program or in the monthly membership, we are going to work on building long-term strength, strengthening our back, providing good support for our back. We're also going to be doing things that will build strength and target areas in the hip and the leg bones and even our wrists. So we are going to work on reducing our risk of fracture and building strength. So if that interests you, um, I will have a link below to get on the wait list for that program. And I hope that you found this helpful. I really hope, truly, truly, that you will start sparing your spine and being mindful and understanding how important posture is. And on that note, I will say my adieus for the day and I hope to have uh, another opportunity to talk soon. Bye-bye.